Okay, starting with the basics, what is sub terahertz and why is it so important for 6G? That's an excellent question, Catherine. So sub terahertz is a new spectrum band for cellular. As we know, spectrum is an essential aspect of cellular communication and is a finite resource. That is why it is important to expand the new spectrum for each cellular generation. Just like millimeter wave for 5G provided much higher bandwidth and throughput, the addition of sub, sub terahertz for 6G will be a huge stepping stone, opening up even wider bandwidth that will allow us to enter into the terabit per second era. In addition to raw speed, there are other benefits that sub terahertz can bring, including capacity and lower latencies. Sub terahertz will both enhance existing applications and support new ones, such as wireless front hole, wireless fiber to the home, wireless data centers, and even 6G mobile broadband applications. It sounds like there's a lot of benefits there, but what are some of the challenges associated with moving to sub terahertz? Okay. So like we introduced millimeter wave for 5G, there are challenges when moving up to sub terahertz frequency bands. Power inefficiencies when operating at the sub terahertz requires large array beamforming antennas. In the current demo, we are using lens MIMO architecture instead of large beamforming array. Like optical transmission, we use a lens to concentrate the RF energy into precise beam. Another important benefit of lens MIMO is cost and power efficiencies. If we keep the same antenna aperture sizes we use today in millimeter wave, the effective beam width in sub terahertz will be X4 more narrow in both azimuth and elevation. This leads to many more beams covering the same physical space and thus a much more complex beam management solution. This will require innovative solutions both on the specification level and implementation level. And finally, does sub terahertz require a new waveform? Yes, so moving to sub terahertz spectrum introduces several new challenges. For example, we expect much stronger phase noise when compared even to millimeter wave. Introduction of a new downlink waveform will help to handle the stronger phase noise. Additionally, we, if we simply scale existing solutions in millimeter wave towards sub terahertz, then the mobile device power consumption will just be unsustainable. Instead, we are developing solutions that will allow terabits per second communication while still maintaining reasonable power consumption. An example is using multi-level coding to reduce the power consumption of the channel coding by up to 65%. Shay, thanks so much for your time.